Hello, YouTube. Frosty here. We're going to skip the picture of my face and get right into what we're doing here. we got a little quiet time at work. We're going to mess with this Tillotson Racing Block 236cc. I guess you'd call it a big bore stroker. We're going to be using a cylinder head. From MoFlo. It's uh, CNC ported. Comes with double valve springs. And you'll notice the exhaust valves rotated up just slightly. Let's see. 32 millimeter intake, 25 millimeter exhaust. And this head has an 18cc combustion chamber. And I'll tell you, this thing is really nicely built. They paid a lot of attention to detail when they put this head together. Now, EC carburetors also did a pretty damn good job of putting their stroker kit together. Uh, I've heard from other people the same thing. I didn't have to grind anything when I put this lower end together. I put it together for a mock-up with the EC rod and I started with a smaller cam. I didn't have any clearance issues. I didn't have to grind the block any top or bottom. And the cam cleared, the rod cleared, the dipper cleared, everything cleared. So I went ahead and I put in a 292 cam from NR Racing and that'd be 292 lift and right around 260 duration. It's long. That's at 50 thousandths. And uh, I put it together uh, originally with a brand new Honda side cover, but I decided, you know, I've got this EC billet side cover here with a nice little cam bearing in it. And uh, I figured I may as well put that thing on there. Now, I'm not going to use the O-ring because I don't have any shims on this crank and without the O-ring I put the cover on there I don't get any end play. So I'm going to go ahead and use a gasket on this thing and we'll see if she seals. Now I won't, I won't bore you with you know assembling the lower end and all that and putting the side cover on and torquing it down. I'll just tell you I've got a Pretty much deck height setup, uh, 32 thou copper head gasket on there, the head stud kit from either OMB or EC carburetors, I forget who. Anyway, I'll get that side cover buttoned on there, and we're going to be checking the push rods that I just bought to see if they're the correct length to use with uh, these EC rev rockers. That'll be that. We'll get her running in a later video as soon as the valve cover gets here. And we figure out what we're going to put on here for a carburetor. Uh, probably a 28 millimeter D slide, you know, Chai Cuny until we can get a good flat slide. And, uh, yeah. I don't have a lot of trick tools to show you in this video except for a valve spring compressor I got off of Amazon. But I will have a whole load of stuff coming from Mr. Joe at Joe's All-Star Tools in the next video. Uh, some really nice hammers, uh, some really nice magnetic screwdrivers, and a couple other goodies I want to show you. So let's move on, and I'll, I'll show you the cylinder head. Well, here's our cylinder head. I disassembled it. And the the only thing I can find that I don't absolutely love about this thing is that the valve stems and the guides were dry. And I'm thinking that's because they expect you to take this head apart, do your own modifications to it before it goes on the bike. Machine work inside's real nice. Do not cut spring pockets. I'm sure you'd get away with shaving them just a little bit, but I wouldn't shave them much. Look at that runner. Now there are a few carbide burr marks in there where they finish up 
just a couple of little spots with a burr, but for the most part, their CNC program takes care of just about everything. And I don't mind that finish. I think that finish is going to be just fine. That's your exhaust port. Let's go over and see the intake port. Very nice intake runner. A little room to improve the seat just a little bit, but you know, it's a multi angle seat. They actually did back cut the intake valve once on here. I used to do them twice, but uh, there's one back cut on the intake valve. I'm happy to see that. And they didn't leave a big step around the valve seat. There's a little tiny step there. And it, you could get in there and blend that little itty bitty step away, but it's not bad like you see with a lot of automotive heads. This, this seat will flow real good right out of the box. In fact, that chamber, I mean, it looks like it'll just it'll just pick up the flow right off the valve seat, especially at low lift. Now, here's your intake runner. Not overly huge, but you can damn near see the whole valve seat out of there, and the short side radius is really nice in these. It's gentle on both sides. And there's actually a radius, not like your factory clone head where it's just a cliff. Now, this is the 18cc version, as you can see in Magic Marker there. 14cc head is with one of the local mini bike engine gurus. They're supposedly going to put bigger valves in it and do some of their own porting, which we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of sad I didn't run the head first, but one thing I want to tell you is this 18cc head looks like the chamber is cut just about perfect for a 72 millimeter bore. I wouldn't go sticking this head right on a 70 millimeter bore without either welding up the edge of the chamber slightly or um, milling it down just a little bit. I think uh, he had 72 and above in mind for the 18cc head and your stock bore or your uh, 212 engines, your uh, 2750s in mind for the 14cc head. Uh, your passages line up. I could clip a little copper out right there on the oil drain back. Not much, but a little. Nothing ugly about this thing. Um, every edge looks like it's manually deburred. Now the exhaust valve seat, I kind of think that most of the people that buy this head are going with a big engine three inch bore stuff and they go ahead and hog that seat out right away the exhaust seat is a little bit wide it's hard to see on here let's see if i got something i can point to it with damn get my phone to cooperate but you can kind of see a darker gray around the exhaust valve seat where they might have lapped it when they cut it so your seat is not, your, your actual ceiling surface there is not all the way out to the edge of that valve seat. So you could probably put a 27 millimeter valve right on that seat. Let's take a look. We drop the exhaust valve in there. And yeah, there is plenty of room around that seat. Again, your little lift flow is probably going to be pretty excellent with this head. I'm kind of excited. Now, I don't know that I personally am going to need much bigger than a 25 millimeter exhaust. People get carried away with that real quick. And your 32 intake for this size engine, I think, is going to be just about perfect. Going bigger, I mean, it's just going to kill the torque. What I want out of this thing is torque. Or else we'd be running a big flathead. Now I took this apart because I am going to reassemble it just with the inner springs. This thing comes with a dual. There's the inner. 
There's the outer. It's probably a 50 pound spring. And there's these really nice titanium retainers it comes with. And I used uh, this kind of cheesy valve spring compressor that I got on Amazon. Your typical Chinese motorcycle valve spring compressor. It's made out of tubing. It's really light. It's oval. You could probably put it in a vise, but uh, it operates just fine by hand, especially for what we're doing here. Now, I think I can snap these things back together by hand with just the inner spring, and we'll throw the head on, throw our push rods in, throw the rockers on, and see what our sweep across that valve looks like. Uh, one thing that I noticed right away on this EC side cover is it looks like you omit that little bottom dowel pin that you find on the Tillotsons. That's okay. We've got one up here and one here on the front of the engine. That should be just fine along with the cam and the crank going through it. That should get her pretty well lined up. Now this thing is just a this thing is like a work of art. It's got a partial sump carved out into it and that line there goes up to the top and there's a PCV fitting that goes into that hole You've got, or an oil fill cap which I think maybe the PCV would be better off going in that second hole there but you're going to get some splashing it's unbaffled and then you've got a smaller port there for a pulse if you want to get a pulse off the crank case then I'm going to have hoses coming from the valve cover as well and we'll route some to a real nice little puke tank that we got from I believe EC. I I don't uh, have a favorite. I like Go Power Sports for a lot of their stuff, but when I'm looking for more serious parts, I lean toward EC carburetors. But again, I don't have a favorite. Well, what we've done here is we oiled up those guides and then I reassembled these heads, maybe you can see. I took the inner springs out just for now. Now, uh, you can see them sitting there. I wouldn't dare run it like this because there's really nothing in there to locate the spring on the outside. I mean, it sits nicely in that little pocket in the head but, yeah, there is nothing to keep that spring from dancing around. Bad enough it's sitting on the bare aluminum. I might either get a 5.5 millimeter valve seal, cut the seal out, because I typically don't run them. But uh, to have something for that spring to sit on, or maybe try and find a couple of shims to put under there, 15 thousandths or something just to keep the spring from digging into the aluminum. Now I put these push rods in there. Now, these are five inch 260. I guess that's stock length for a Predator. And I got them from OMB Warehouse. They say NR Racing on them, which don't mean much. They kind of remind me of the old Smith Brothers push rods we used to get from, for Chevrolets. They're uh, 316 chromoly. I don't think uh, we need to go quarter inch with this build. It's it's never going to see 10,000 RPM. So we'll go ahead and put our rockers on and see if we can get in there and see what our sweep looks like. Now, there's some color on the end of those valve tips. Didn't stay very well. I'm not really in a machine shop here. I'm in a ice factory. I have a pretty good workbench and a huge assortment of tools, but what I don't have is any dicum down here, any metal dye. I have to pick up a little brush top can of that stuff here pretty quick. Now the one complaint I have about the EC side cover is on now on this Tillotson block anyway. I don't know about all of them, but it uh, it came with some really nice Allen hardware, but the bolts. We're about a quarter of an inch too long. So 
So I took their supplied hardened washers, the nice ones, and stuck this thing on with the brand new, I guess, factory or factory replacement fasteners, and I think it's going to be just fine. Now, I don't have a whole lot of end play, but I think it's going to be sufficient. It's not hard to turn. We'll give it a check once we get the flywheel on there. Uh, plenty of side clearance on the rod. It slides back and forth on the crank pretty nice. And everything rotates over you know, like butter. The ring gap looked good. So let's go ahead and check our push rod lane. Well, here we are on split overlap. One thing I can tell you about this head, with the EC rockers as nice and light and pretty as they are, something about that offset, and I lied to you, the offset's on the intake valve, not the exhaust, but uh, that intake valve is kind of rolled up and toward the, or toward the center of the bore a little bit. Maybe closer to the spark plug, I don't know, but uh, I'm not sure why they did that. Maybe to make more room to unshroud it. But the EC rocker with that small roller in there, if you look, let's see if we can get this super iPhone camera to focus. There we go. Get it in the right spot to focus. You'll see that. That edge of the rocker body there may at some point come in contact with the tip of that valve. Now we're not having any, any trouble with clearance to the retainer or anything like that. And our push rods clear everything. They clear the head gasket, they clear the head. Uh, this is again split overlap here. So one thing I thought was kind of neat, I can shine a light. Well, Astro light from Mr. Joe there. I can shine that down the plug hole, look through the exhaust port, and believe it or not, when the light is right, you can actually see the exhaust valve in there. We uh, got a chance of getting some scavenging. When you look at the look through the exhaust port, you can see the intake, and it's split anyway. We got. Looks like plenty of piston to valve clearance, and that's with a fairly long cam. I'm going to look into that rocker just a little bit more. If it looks like it's going to clear, I'm going to run with it. If it looks like it's going to rub on the valve tip, which I doubt it will, we're not lifting the valve that far, then we'll, you know go with a set of gauge rockers or try and find something with a bigger roller but I think these are going to be just fine and what I may do is call up the folks at EC and see if I can't get a hold of some shims it looks like if I take the load off it, it'd probably be easier, but it looks like you can slide that rocker over a little bit on the shaft. Yeah, there's quite a gap there. Not much. I don't know if it'd be enough, but... It's pretty promising. I think we're going to be able to just... Torque that head down, torque that side cover down, throw a flywheel on it, a coil, and whatever flavor Chinese McCuny knockoff we have floating around and get her started up. Let's keep moving. <laughs> 